there we're talking. Hey sweeties, today we are going to check out the Power XL Air Fryer Grill. It's an eight in one, I don't know what the whole eight, eight are, we're gonna find out. Eight in one air fryer, uh, smokeless grill, rotisserie, bakes, broils, all that good stuff. We're gonna find out what it does right after you subscribe. <laughs> and hit that notification bell give me that thumbs up now let's get into this air fryer power xl air fryer grill roaster rotisserie i purchased it from amazon a couple of months ago and it comes in stainless steel like i have here it also comes in black you can get it with the six piece accessory set or the eight piece accessory set i actually ordered the six piece and they sent the eight piece which I'm not gonna argue with them. At the time I purchased it, the six piece set uh, stainless steel was um, $159.99 and the eight piece with uh, accessory kit is $199.99 at this time, but you know, prices are subject to change. Let me show you the accessories that came with it and then we'll uh, do a little testing. We'll cook a little something, you know? Cook a little something in it. Comes with the drip tray a pizza rack, a baking pan, which you put on the pizza rack to use. The eight piece accessory kit comes with the egg tray. Then it also has the non-stick griddle. It's made of aluminum. And then it's got these little pour spouts on the these opposite corners here. And the griddle, the grill pan, which comes with the six piece and the eight piece um, set, also has those little uh, drip spouts. It's aluminum as well. The crisper basket and the rotisserie. The Power Air Fryer Grill is measures just about 10 and a half inches high. about 19 and a quarter inches wide and about 13, let's say 14 inches deep. It does say not to use it under upper cabinets, but then it says make sure there's at least five inches clearance um, from anything above it. So I don't know if you can't use it. So this is about eight inches. So hopefully it should be fine. It also says not to use it with an outlet that is below the unit. So if I put it on my island, then the outlet is below the unit. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. <laughs> now, if we take a peek inside, let's take out that rack. You see some crumbs on the bottom <laughs> and the drip tray because we've been making toast, which is really what I wanted. I wanted something that could be a toaster oven and sit out on the counter, but also air fryer. And the grill was just, I was curious. <laughs> so it's got heating elements, two on the top and two on the bottom with the fan on the side there. There's also a heating element in there. The controls, these knobs for your temperature and toast values. Your functions, rotisserie, bagel toast, sorry, reheat <laughs> pizza, bake, broil, grill, air fry or air fry grill. It's got your timer on there. Little red light to let you know that it's on. And then the different levels to put your racks or your accessories, broil toast, bake pizza, reheat, grill, air fry. Now let's see if this is good at the basics, making toast. So I'm gonna put one plain slice of bread and one slice with American cheese. Let's, oh it's already set on this side. It has the different toast markings. So you set it to how you want your toast. We'll leave it there at 400. Put it on the toast bagel setting and then now see, there's a little toast thing, but if you see here, it says turn it past 20 and then to the desired time. So I'll turn it past 20 and then back to the desired time. And let's see if it makes toast.
And you can hear already, no fan, which is a great thing because if the fan was blowing, it would blow our toast and our cheese all around this oven. And we don't want that. There we go. Now you can see the heating element on the bottom has got nice and red and so is the one on the top. And our cheese is starting to get melty. It's starting to make toast. All right, let's take a look to see what we got. That toast is toasting. The cheese is getting nice and brown like I like it. There we go. How do you like your toast? Is that too dark? Just dark enough? Let's pull that out. I'm gonna let that keep going. And it didn't toast quite as evenly as I would like. But let's move that over. And we'll let that finish. For a couple, just maybe a minute longer. But let's take a look at that piece of toast. And it's nicely toasted on both sides. You don't have to flip it. You know, you don't have to worry about it toasting. I mean, it toasted pretty evenly. So, I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. That's toast, all right. I'm gonna pull out that toast with cheese, too. That's one of my favorite snacks. They get a little scorched on the top. So you can see, it's not quite as even. This was toasting on this far right side, but pretty good. Let's look at the back. The bottom is toasted nicely. And while it toasts top and bottom well, I'm not so happy with the way it toasts across the top. You can see it's not quite as even as it should be. It comes with the Power XL Air Fryer Cookbook. It's a thick cookbook too. And we'll take a look at some of the recipes in there. It's got the uh, guide for the accessory kit using the griddle and the egg tray. Then it's got another smaller cookbook, air frying, grilling, toasting, and more. And we're going to kind of loosely follow this direction for grilled chicken thighs and potatoes. Because I have <laughs> chicken thighs, it calls for boneless chicken thighs, and I happen to have some boneless chicken thighs, boneless skinless chicken thighs, and baby potatoes. So that's what we're gonna make, kind of. Like, uh, I'm using my own seasoning, I'm not adding Dijon mustard or white balsamic vinegar because I don't have white balsamic vinegar. So we've got those little baby potatoes cut in half. Got some diced onion in there and I had a bag of broccoli florets. I'm gonna put a little oil on there. I'm just gonna drizzle a little oil on there. Any kind of neutral flavored oil, little vegetable oil, little garlic powder in there. pepper, a little kosher salt, and toss it all together. And then this is all going to go into the crisper tray, which is this basket. And I don't want to overload it. I want it to be enough for the whole family, but I don't want to overload the basket. That looks pretty good. It's not quite in one layer, but almost. That ought to be good. Let's continue with the rest of the recipe. I'll grab my chicken thighs out of the refrigerator. So the directions on this recipe say to take this grill plate and slide it into position six, just right there, and then take the crisper basket and put it into position Four. And then we will turn the function dial to air fry grill. So that's air fry grill. And set the temperature to 450 degrees. Temperature is at 450 degrees and set the timer for 30 minutes. Let's see. Oh, there's no 30 on there. 
so we'll go halfway for 30 minutes. And then it says when there are 20 minutes left on the timer, then we'll place the chicken. Uh oh, I was supposed to. Oh yeah. So the, the grill plate is going to preheat while our vegetables go ahead and cook. And then when there are 20 minutes left on the timer, we're gonna place the chicken onto the grill plate. All right, good to go. Directions say when there are 20 minutes left on the timer to add the chicken to the grill plate. So let's do that. Make sure you have on gloves, heat proof gloves, or heat resistant gloves for safety. And, ooh, nice. Let me hurry and get these on there. I don't want to overcrowd the pan, so I'm going to stop right there. Okay. All right, then it says when there are 15 minutes left to toss some garlic onto the, onto the vegetables. So I'll have to set another timer to go off in five minutes. All right, it's uh, cooking away. You can hear what it sounds like there. My son just said it sounds like the Tesseract, and if you are a Marvel movie fan, you know exactly what that is. <laughs> so the directions say when there are 15 minutes left on the timer to toss some garlic. I got my garlic ready, but wait, come back here for a second. You can see that there's no 15 minute marking, so you kind of have to guess. So that's about 15 minutes. So we will go in here into the crisper tray, toss on a little garlic. As I toss it in there, you can see it makes a little bit of a mess on the door. Um, I should have taken it out over, maybe over the sink or something. You don't want to have all of this stuff. So you got to be careful when you're tossing stuff in that crisper tray. All right, I'm going to close that back. And then when there are 10 minutes left on the timer, we turn the chicken. It's got a little caution symbol on the top warning you that it does get hot. The outside of the unit does get hot. It's got vents on the top as well as on the sides and around the back. So make sure that you do use that instruction keeping it at least five inches away all around from other appliances and objects. So when there are 10 minutes left we will flip the chicken. There's no 10 minute marker. There is a piece of toast. So uh, let's go with that. It's almost at the piece of toast. So let's flip that over and be careful. Pull the tray out carefully and flip the chicken over. Now this recipe was for six boneless chicken thighs. I put five chicken thighs on there and um, I think if it, like it didn't really sear, well, let's let, let it finish, but I didn't want to overcrowd it because there was a lot of juice coming out and it was kind of steaming with five chicken breasts, so I think six might have been too many. Well, let's see. We'll let it finish cooking. We'll check the uh, internal temperature of the chicken. If it is 165, then we are ready to serve. Oh, it's almost ready. The timer should be going off in a few minutes. You can hear it sizzling in there. there. All right. It's ready. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, let me grab my tongs. Let me grab this. And I'll pull this tray out and we'll check the temperature. I'm gonna put this onto the stove so I can check the temperature. All right, follow me. First I wanna see. Oh, now we got some grill marks. There we're talking. That looks good. Let's get a little closer on that. That looks good. 
Let me grab my thermometer. Oh, that is done. That is good to go. So let's check the vegetables and see what we got. Vegetables look good. The broccoli got brown. The potatoes didn't take on too much color. Let's see, I'm gonna pop one in my mouth to see if it's tender. Not quite. Not quite tender. The broccoli looks good. The potatoes are not quite done. I'm gonna put that back for another few minutes. So, getting the timing right, um, with cooking a protein and cooking a vegetable, trying to get them done at the same time can be a little tricky. And when you have this on that air fry grill setting, you'll see the heating element on the bottom is hot on the top. They are not. So it's heating from the bottom and then from the side as well as the fan blowing from the side. It shows you in this function, uh, cooking function chart um, when you use different function where the heat and the uh, fan come from. So if you air fry, then the heat comes from the bottom and the side. If you grill, it comes from the top and the bottom. If you broil, the heat just comes on at the top. Baked pizza, it comes on at the top and bottom. With the toast bagel, it comes from the top and bottom, but the fan is not used. And so it gives you all of the, the details. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. I let it cook for another 10 minutes. The broccoli is getting brown, which I like it when it's nice and brown, uh, but I don't want it to burn. Like, see, it's getting ready to go too far. And the, uh, the potatoes are just about done. Uh, I tasted one a minute ago. It was almost done. So we got our broccoli, onion, and potatoes, and our grilled chicken. Now, the timer wasn't quite done, uh, so I took the, all the food out, but it's hard to, how do you turn it off? Um, I guess I'll just unplug it. Uh, I, it says, turn, the no, turn past 20 and then to the desired time. So I feel like I should be able to turn it, but I don't want to force it and break it. But I can't turn it off um, if there's time still left on the clock. So that's an issue. We've got our vegetables, and I think I should have put a little bit more in the pan. It's not quite enough for for adults, almost. Next time I do this, I will not use potatoes. I will use broccoli, cauliflower, um, uh, soft vegetables like that because they can be done in the same time as the chicken. Um, and then the chicken actually. When I tested the temperature after the time was finished, the chicken was at 185 degrees. Uh, so well done, past the time, uh, past the temperature that it needed to be. So I will, I like the recipe. I just need some adjustments. So I would reduce the cooking time and I will switch the potatoes for cauliflower, do like cauliflower, um, and broccoli. But all in all, I think it's uh, doing, I think it did well. Um, <laughs> the timer is still going. I unplugged it because, you know, I pulled everything out, but the timer is still going. The cleanup was very easy. So here's the final dish. I just gave it a taste. It's good. It's a little bit um, dry. Like I said, it's a little overdone. The chicken needed a little less cooking time and the potatoes need a little more cooking time. So the next time I make this, I will reduce the cooking time. I would uh, switch the potatoes out for cauliflower and broccoli, and then um, I think the recipe would work fine. So that is my first test of the Power XL grill air fryer oven. <laughs> so for the Power XL air fryer grill, toaster oven rotisserie. I'm gonna give the first look a B. Um, it didn't toast as evenly across as I would have liked and with the grill pan 
Only one side got good grill marks doing cooking. I also didn't like the imprecise timer mechanism. I'm gonna keep using it. I'll try the egg tray next. I will keep using it and keep updating you on how it works. So please subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. It's still ticking, can you hear it? <laughs> that notification bell. Still ticking. <laughs> Y'all have a delicious day.